Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. Uh, we are in Second Corinthians, the first chapter, and we actually finished the first chapter in the previous episode. But I want to go back and reread uh, probably about the last half of those verses again, because there's a lot of things here that I just want us to see that was happening, was going on. Uh, remember what was going Paul was basically given a defense for why he had done something. <clears throat> he had not come through and visited them uh, in the way that he said. And people were using that against him. Some people were saying, well, yeah, he said he was going to do this. He said, yes, I'm going to do it. But he really didn't. So he meant no. And so Paul deals with this. Yes, yes, no, no thing. We read it previously from the New Living tr- Translation. I want to read it from, um, I believe this is New American Standard. Yeah, New American Standard today. Uh, it's, the New American Standard actually is a little clunkier, <laughs> okay? It's not as smooth, but it brings out some nuances, and particularly some teaching that Paul throws in in the middle of it. And he does this all the time, and I think this is a good pattern of practice for us. Is that sometimes when we're just having what we would call a normal conversation, you know, that, that we would speak forth the truth of the Lord and just rejoice in Him. So let's start with verse 12. He says this, For our proud confidence is this, the testimony of our conscience that in holiness and godly sincerity, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God, we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially toward you. So here's what he's saying. He said, we have conducted ourselves the right way before you, not in the wisdom of man, not in a world way, but in the uh, wisdom and in the grace and the holiness of God. He said, this is how we've been living before you. And by we, he means himself and the entourage is with him. Verse 13. But we write nothing else to you than what you read and understand. And I hope you understand until the end. And so in the in the previous time together, uh, the uh, translation I used said, hey, there's nothing. I, I didn't write anything in between the lines here. And that's literally what it's meant right here. I didn't write anything else to you other than what you read and what you understand. You can understand what it is. There's nothing hidden here. Verse 14, he continues. Just as you also partially did understand us, that we are your reason to be proud, as you also ours in the day of our Lord Jesus. And so he's saying we both are believers. We both are uh, bragging on each other, and we will be. We will be supporting each other until the day of the Lord, till the Lord returns. So verse 15, in this confidence, in other words, with this understanding, I intended at first to come to you so that you might twice receive a blessing. That is, to pass your way into Macedonia and again from Macedonia to come to you and by you to be helped on my journey to Judea. So he's letting them know forthrightly, hey, this was my intent. This was my confident intent. I was going to go to Macedonia and you're on the way there. So I was going to stop off and see you on the way to Macedonia and I'm going to come back from Macedonia and pass through again. And when I pass through again, I'm going to hang out for a while, and I hope that you'll be able to help me on my journey to Judea, supply my needs that I have to go to Judea. Verse 17, therefore, I was not vacillating when I intended to do this, was I? So he asked them a question, a rhetorical question of which they knew the answer. In other words, he wasn't saying, well, I may do this or I may do that. I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. That would have been fine, too, because you see Paul doing that quite often. But no, he said, I wasn't vacillating. I intended to do this. And then he says this, or what I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh so that with me there will be a yes and a yes and a no and a no at the same time? He's saying, no, this was my intended purpose. This is what I believe that God wanted me to do. Verse 18, but as God is faithful Our word to you is not yes and no. In other words, my word is not vacillating. My word was what my word was. But you know what? Sometimes that word changes because of situation and circumstance. (laughs) Remember what the circumstance was? We're about to see again in verse 19. And this is the teaching that's so good. For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silvanus, Silas, and Timothy was not yes and no, but yes and him. He says, you remember when we came to you, the three of us, that we preached the Son of God, Christ Jesus. And we, we did not equivocate this at all. Okay, we told you the truth. Verse 20, for as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. 
Therefore, also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. <laughs> so he's saying, hey, we spoke and told you what we were going to do. So don't let somebody sit there and say, I'm being wishy-washy about it. Because we spoke to you the truth in the Son of God, Christ Jesus. We spoke the truth about the Father in the same way we spoke the truth. Verse 21, now hang on to this. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. This is a tremendous uh, a, a teaching right here. This is tremendous insight. And sadly, uh, a lot of the body of Christ still uh, argues over these things. And there's really no argument because you can sit right here. And here's the truth. You see, he who established us with you in Christ, that he is referring to the next part and anointed us is God. You see God, the father, you see Christ, the son, you see that we're sealed, that God sealed us and gave us the spirit. You see, Father, Son, Spirit, in one sentence, you see how they function together. You see the Father is the one who establishes the Father's seal. We're established in Christ because we believe in Christ and what he did for us. We're sealed by the Spirit, who's just as much God as the Father and the Son is. And you say, well, I don't quite understand that. That's a mystery. Well, there you go. We're beginning to understand it when you acknowledge that it is a mystery. But then he says this, verse 23, in closing out, he says, But I call God as witness to my soul that to spare you I did not come again to Corinth. He says, you know what? God knows my heart. And I'm calling upon God as witness that the reason I didn't come to you wasn't because I was being wishy-washy, because I got a better offer, because I said yes when I really meant no, or I got off and said, oh, I wish I hadn't said yes. I think I'll just change my mind. No, no. I see. He says, I'm calling God as a witness that the reason I didn't come was to spare you, to spare you. That's what it says, that to, sp- that to spare you, I did not come again to Corinth. Well, spare them from what? Well, when you read some other translations, they add a couple of words to help us understand. The spare them the strong rebuke that he was going to be giving them. Verse 24, the last verse of the chapter says this. Not that we lorded over your faith, but are workers with you for our joy. For in your faith, you are standing firm. So he says, no, no, I'm not going to come in and lord it over you like I'm a super duper high and mighty faith person. OK, he said, we're fellow workers with you. You're our joy. OK, you are our joy. We are your joy. We hope. <laughs> and in your faith, you're standing firm in your faith. But boy, there's some things right there that need to happen and some stuff that need to occur and some things that need to be said. And I just didn't want to rebuke you over it right now, and I wanted to give you more time. Remember, he'd written letters to him, and they'd been going back and forth. Some things were happening. We've seen one letter, 1 Corinthians. We know of another letter. He's already mentioned letters, okay? And we're going to see more about that in this letter right here. But he says, no, I wasn't equivocating. He said, remember this. The one who established us is in Christ, and he, you know, we're anointed in Christ by God. We're sealed by him. And so by that same power, I'm not equivocating yes or no. And you know what? You need to live likewise in the same way. Folks, how much more do we need to live likewise? That our yeses are yes, our noes are no in the Most High God. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.